Hi, Papa. Hi, Papa. You coming up? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yuck, 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 yuck. I'm just gonna, uh. I know, I know, I know. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, you need a. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. Oh. Right in the mouth. Right in the mouth. Okay, okay. You wanna. Why? Why do we have to do this every. Every time. Every time. Oh, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You're the one who wanted to come up here. You're, you, yeah, okay. Don't snap at me. Hi, 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 Bubba. I'm just going to jump into it because there's a lot of ground to cover and, uh, and, uh, this is me jumping into it. And I have notes, but, uh, uh, I'm going to forget things because they aren't as comprehensive as they need to be. Uh, my name is Crumbine. I am a, 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 a professional storyteller and an amateur YouTuber, and uh, this is uh, The Watchlist, where I record very long videos uh, about, about thought with, with thoughtful uh, critique about uh, film and television, and uh, my last video was about my own video, so it's it's more than just film and television and, uh, you know, other media as well. Um, 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 I, I edited a lot of that video because I was going through and I was like, wow, I said um a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be very thoughtful and try to be mindful of that because I don't like editing. I don't, I do that professionally and I don't want to do that in these, in these videos. So, if you are interested in a review, if you are interested in, um, if you're interested in a recap or a summary of a film or, or the story, in this case we're talking about uh, Godzilla Kong New Empire, there are plenty. If you're interested in short videos, short commentary, there are plenty of other videos on YouTube. Go watch them because that's not what this one is. This is this is going to be a long video. We're going to hang out. We're going to talk uh, kaiju. We're going to talk Godzilla Kong. We're going to talk uh, what worked about the film, what didn't work, um, and uh, and that's it. And I said um again, and uh, there's an uh. So uh, yeah, <laughs> spoilers ahead. I am coming back to YouTube. It's uh, it's a process. It's a process, so uh, let's, uh, let's, um, uh, yes, final, final kind of intro note is that, uh, this is an unscheduled interruption. I, uh, typically wanted to do an episode of Honestly Crumbine, which is very exciting for me because it's set the second act of that show of my experimental vlog series. I'm not entirely ready. I'm still working out some of the production stuff uh, for that series. So I'm not entirely ready for that particular episode. And then I was lucky enough to see Godzilla Kong New Empire. I'm just going to be cut. I'm going to try to just call it uh, the New Empire, New Empire, because of that stupid, <laughs> stupid accent in that title. Uh, it'll be easier that way. I'll, uh, I, so I was lucky enough to see see the movie. It's been you know twenty four hours. Uh, actually, yes, about twenty four hours since since I since I saw it. Uh, a little over twenty four hours. And um, yeah, it was. It, I, I I wasn't planning uh, on 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 talking about this this film at all. But it, 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 again, like it it feels appropriate considering what I do with with this um with this series the watch list so uh, first and foremost I wanted to kind of say like just just to be perfectly clear I am biased as fuck for this film for for Godzilla Kong I so and, and the best example of this is um when I rank my top five films of like all time my favorite five films of all time i got to number five and i was like you know what i can't just pick one film for this for this category i'm going to just pick 
mon- the monster kaiju genre. There are films that I really like in the genre. There are films that um, have parts that I really like where the rest of this of the movie isn't so great or story or 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 series uh for example uh I did watch a couple of months ago the Netflix anime Gamera Rebirth fucking fantastic if you haven't seen that check that one out that's that's a great it's not necessarily inside the monster verse not necessarily Godzilla, Kong, or any of those things, but it is another and different take on on, on kaiju monsters and and also classic kaiju monsters. So Gamera, uh, the anime, that was really really good. And I like I am not even an an anime person. So this was the first anime that I have seen that I have actually liked. I don't know if you can call. The, the Skull Island car a- animated show on Netflix. I don't know if that's necessarily anime or not. I did watch that. Not sure it ranks. Mm, there are parts that I like, but I'm not really sure it ranks uh, in the Monsterverse uh, stories. Um, so, uh, again, the context and bias. Skull Island... Uh, Kong Skull Island is my favorite MonsterVerse film installment, even after uh, this new one, uh, New Empire. Um, uh, Kong Skull Island. But then again, I have like a fetish for giant monkey action. So uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong beautiful film i love and 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 then in, inside that film king kong uh facing off with the v rexes like talk about you know monster m- movie monster kaiju action perfection i lo- like th- these are i have i i have a soft spot for giant monkeys i even uh a last note that I put in here was like Rampage with uh, uh, The Rock. Uh, it was based on the frivolous video game or whatever. I loved that movie. It, it, it worked really well for me. Wouldn't rank it like, uh, uh, you know, top anything, but uh, I guess if I were to rank my favorite giant monster monkey movies, it would be certainly in um, the top it is it's a fun it's a fun fucking film but in the context uh of the bias in these monster films and the reason that this genre exists as my my top 5 favorite film films instead of a film an, an individual film uh Jurassic World which i've mentioned slightly previously in the past and there probably will be a a big in-depth video in the future um i love jurassic world more and more every day it it, it is a beautifully meta film that i think most people don't quite comprehend um and and certainly in the context of this conversation that final the final battle in the end between the Indominus and the Raptors and uh, uh, and 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 the Rex, um, like again, movie cinema, mo- movie monster cinematic perfection, fighting perfection. Uh, I don't think a lot of people think of the Jurassic World slash Park films as kaiju films, but I think. That finale in in Jurassic World earns earns that feather. It it, it earns its stripes. It and it and it deserves to be mentioned in in that same uh, in that same breath because of that. Um, and then finally, uh, very stupid video in the background. I try sometimes I like to put um, like a, a movie trailer or something in the background, um, but. I get copyright problems with that. So this video, I will restart. So there's 
a little bit more flavor than just the chapter segments. But after Versus, uh, I wrote this story based on... Uh, this, I wrote this short story uh, based on uh, characters and, and stories that uh, from, from my own writing world universe stuff. So Explorers of the Unknown versus Kaiju Fufu, uh, where there's a kaiju bunny rabbit attacking the city of Greenville and the Explorers of the Unknown, an elite team of paranormal paranormal investigators have to come up with a way to battle this this uh giant bunny rabbit and subdue this threat. And there is a T-Rex involved that gets but anyway, that's 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 it was inspired by uh, Godzilla versus Kong, and certainly you know that trope in these movies. I, I this is one of the jokes in this story is is when you have to reach out when the, when the character always has to reach out and touch. They always it it always it happened in in the New Empire. They they have to reach out and touch, and. Uh, there, there's a, there's, I think there's a good gag about that in this, in this short story. So kind of related, kind of unrelated, but it's nice to kind of throw that on in the background. Um, there you go. So, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what this is. We're just, we're just hanging out and talking fun movies and, and crazy opinions and critiques. So like I kind of already said, Jurassic World new empire old problems new empire worked really well i'm gonna have i i i sat i watched it i had a smile on my face again like i told you at the very start super fucking biased on the whole, like the movie, the movie has to do a lot of a lot of things bad in order for me not. To, I'm showing up for giant monkey action. It gave me giant monkey action. I have two major negative critiques about this about this film. Uh, they are not related to Godzilla, although I think that is a, a fair thing to critique. Kind of, sorta. We will talk about that, but we'll get to all of that later. What I think is interesting about these films, and it really did start in Versus, and my hat tip to uh, Wingard for, for doing this, but these films are representative of turning the monsters into the main characters. So when we look at these films, and I think, from from like verses back, we have that legacy issue of really bad human characters. That has never bothered me so much because we're showing up for the giant monster action, right? And I I I've I I, I brought up Jurassic World because I think Jurassic World is a very critical film in this genre space. And in this current timeline where Hollywood cinema really started a changing changing that perspective, saying these aren't just movie monsters, right? Prior to Jurassic World, you had Rex, you and and the Raptors very specific, specifically. They were like Godzilla, these forces of nature, these very, you know, these these monsters lurking in the tall grass uh, for our, our heroes to avoid. So much more of a horror perspective for the, the, for the dinosaurs. And then with Jurassic World, they began to become, they, they were embodied with actual characteristics and personalities. Like, the, the, the raptors are the super obvious example, which was, like, when you look at Jurassic World as a bubble, it, or by itself, it's, 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 you, you, you could see the start of it, but when you look at the, the world franchise as a whole, you can see how much Blue became a living, breathing, 
non-human character that the audience experiences those films through to the point where in a slightly alternate universe or if they went a little bit farther with world and the blue storyline you could act you can envision blue anchoring her own film like you could see a film dedicated to blue and and her anchoring it so there's that trend of saying okay these giant movie monsters aren't just the looming threat in the tall grass or that force of nature that just destroys the city they are real living breathing characters with feelings and and emotions and motives and compulsions and hopes and dreams and with kong that's really easy to tap into. We saw that with Kong Skull Island prior to, like, even even without the intentionality of turning these the movie monsters into main characters. Like, it just he he, he is just a perfect fit for this. So there, that's the reason the new empire is so skewed where it's a very very kong i said spoilers ahead <laughs> ahead right uh, i'm not going to be overt about it and i'm not going to recap the story or anything but obviously spoilers so the film is very this new film is very kong heavy and if you haven't already seen the if you're watching this video you've probably already seen the news uh uh, Wingard hopes if he gets to do a third film, third film of his of his saga, right, that uh, the the next one would be would flip the script, and then you would give a lot of that time back to Godzilla to build up that character, because that was what was lacking in in this film. I'm getting ahead of myself, but. We'll we'll get into more of that later, and also kind of establishing, you know, why I like these films and and what what I think these films hang their hats on. Right, we show up for the giant monster action. It's really simple to just deliver that, deliver the giant monster action, and your core audience is going to be happy. For this particular movie, The New Empire, if you are a huge Godzilla fan. You're going to be disappointed. But on the other hand, you just got minus one. So, you know, it balances out. Not not to say what we get of Godzilla in this film is bad. Because I think Godzilla was used extremely strategically and very... Like, like Godzilla's characterizations was super important. And I also think that... The, this was a very important setup. Like, he literally evolved, like, Godzilla powers up and evolves throughout this film. That's his storyline. But I can see from Wingard's perspective, like, oh, this is what I needed to do. Like, he intentionally made him smaller, but also more powerful, but, like, intentionally made Godzilla smaller. What does that do? That you know, makes it less of this looming, domineering force of nature. So in the next film, he can bring out more personality and more uh, more, more character development for, for Godzilla. So I think the groundwork was laid for that. But again, how Godzilla was used in this film was extremely critical. We will be getting into that. So... The old problems, those old critiques about bad human characters. I don't give a shit about that. So, what was great is I think they mastered that balance with this film. Um, they were completely inoffensive. They, they, they didn't bother me at all they they got in and got out and it was it was the monsters as as the main characters you know uh, people have said it i will i will echo 
uh, the sentiment. Dan Stevens knows he is in a monster verse film and he's just enjoying the hell out of it. So that like, and then the bromance between him and, uh, Brian Tyree Henry, Bernie, Bernie Hay, the character Bernie Hayes, there's small moments, but it was like, that's all they needed. That's all they needed to add to, to cover the human component of this story. Because the humans aren't important. It isn't, they aren't the important part of the story. So, so the humans did the bare minimum, but they did the bare minimum well, where it wasn't like, it wasn't sloppy. It wasn't, it wasn't obvious how minimal it was. It wasn't obvious and, and annoying how, how shallow the character, they got in, they did their thing and they got the hell out. And that was great. So, so, but again, that's not what I'm here for the, that's not what I'm, what I'm here for. It's not, it, it doesn't really affect my viewing of the movie. So, uh, let's see. Setting up a big critique later. If nothing else, humans exist in these films to show scale. Because without them, without the human factor, without civilization, the communities, the buildings that the kaiju destroy, you, 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 the towering kaiju just aren't towering. And, and, and that's going to be, that's going to be my number one criticism about the film, because so much of it takes place in hollow earth. But I think it was critical to understand, like, the real point of human characters is to show scale and to show that imminent threat. In an end, in that respect, I feel like that the movie can be criticized for its human characters because we we did not quite feel I did not quite feel that looming threat so much or the scale of the kaiju and the monsters because of how the humans were handled. It's a very minor quibble at the end of the day. The the human part of it. I think it, the, the kaiju part of it and the scale, that's a bigger thing later. So the main characters, we kind of already touched on this, but we've got, we've got Kong and Godzilla. Uh, I already touched on this. It's a very Kong-centric art, arc. Uh, and again, I am very biased to Kong, but I will say his arc is really beautiful. From the opening sequence, Adam Wingard kind of goes out of his way to establish Kong as the main character, as an empathetic and sympathetic character. The opening sequence establishes the weight of our king's loneliness in the hollow earth. I've I've I always say this um and I've said this I've said this before I always say this I think it is non-human characters that tend to sh demonstrate the most human of emotions and I think that that like just in that opening sequence and Adam Wingard did that in 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 verses as well so so again he he I think it's great that he got to do this sequel to Versus. I think, as a as a quick sidebar, um, this franchise, the MonsterVerse franchise, I do. I don't like the Hollow Earth. Uh, I think that was a mistake. I think it is goofy. I think it is dumb. However, I'm not the one um, uh, writing the franchise, so go for it like you know kong skull island they they told all of the magic of of the hollow earth and and the monsters like that was the beauty of skull island it was it was this this island cut off from time so that was a place where all of these things could exist but this franchise decided oh we need we need it to go deeper we need it we need the hollow earth and the problem with that 
is that in order to go to the Hollow Earth, like Hollow Earth, yes, was seeded in Skull Island, Kong, the movie Kong Skull Island, but they didn't actually really get into it, obviously, until Versus. And the problem, the Hollow Earth problem is that it's so fucking goofy that the entire tone of the franchise had to change. And that's where Adam Wingard, you're like, my hat is off to him. He, he, it's like the Dan Stevens comment. Like, Dan Stevens realized he's in a MonsterVerse film, so he just had a fun fucking time with it. He had a blast. And that's Adam Wingard's approach to this, and it, and it shows. The, the franchise needed that evolution to embrace the goofiness and the silliness while still have those high stakes of that kaiju action. Adam Wingard did that. Love it or hate it, he was very successful in that, in creating that evolution with Versus. And I think that's what is so fantastic about the New Empire is that all the rough edges of that transition into that goofy universe of the hollow earth those were ru- those were sanded smooth in in the new film so here we have you know this guy who has a very unique vision for the monster verse and for for these stories and this this uh, this goofy hollow earth plot line that i think actually introduced which g- kind of goes into the complaint category i think the hollow earth problem in the monarch tv series introduced a glaring plot hole maybe i haven't thought about it too much but i think there's a the a timey wimey plot hole cuz in 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 the tv series it was established that time runs differently relativity uh top side down side and I'm not sure how all of that lines up with Scar King's timeline. There's something there was I, I don't know I don't know if there if, if that was actually addressed. Haven't really thought about it, haven't really looked into it, but it feels like a plot hole. In the context of the TV series, it was that that idea, the relativity idea was executed really well, did not justify the existence of the tv series but the idea was really good but i think that idea the relativity and the, uh, that component the timey-wimey portion of hollow earth i think that's an anchor in the film series and i i think it result might have resulted in a plot hole i'm not entirely sure so it's goofy it's silly but the movie needs to embrace that and that, you know, Adam Wingard did a really good job, you know, making that transition from from like 2014, 2014 Godzilla, super dark uh, Godzilla King of Monsters, uh, which was, you know, the mo- the most direct sequel to 14 Godzilla Kong Skull Island kind of always existed as as this other other like it was almost like let's establish another that, that I think Kong Kong Skull Island was the most Marvel version of this like oh let's set up our own character franchise with Kong and then we'll bring them together so Kong Skull Island was just so w- well formed perfectly formed right out the gate as as its own perfect unique thing whereas Godzilla in the monsterverse has iterated and revised and 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 has always had like in the film version like the film each installment each film has had its own host of glaring issues and glaring problems and I think it's fascinating to give Adam Wingard a second hopefully a third chance at this so second time around, he was able to refine his methodology of 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 kaiju storytelling. Did a really good job with that, and it was a tall order to make the franchise silly and goofy. Okay, so uh, we're still talking about uh, we're still talking about 
characters. I, I jumped way ahead accidentally. Uh, okay, so yes, Kong um, is very Kong-centric. And here's the, the first question that I'm sure you're asking, like, because 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 Godzilla is is literally a, 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 a B plot in this movie. And so an obvious question is, can't we care about both? We shouldn't we be able to care about both? It's the runtime was less than two hours. I think it was like an hour 45 about ish. So we could have actually added easily added a little bit more runtime and created two main characters in in Godzilla and Kong that we can care about. And and I think that is an absolutely fair criticism. I think if you are asking that question, bravo. Yes, we can care about that. But that's also not what this movie is about. And I think strategically, Wingard was actually kind of say like, look, you know, he was he was trying to uh, is probably leaving, probably doing some very crafty political mo- maneuvering to to lock in that 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 threequel uh, for this, so that that third movie can be Godzilla Godzilla um, centric. So, what's important, I think, is to kind of look at these these films through that lens of creating that. The, the the sympathetic main characters and and like we've already talked about that's really easy to do with Kong because he's already the human stand-in like it's already there Godzilla is literally a lizard brain right that force of nature lizard brain so it takes a lot more effort to develop that character and again look at what they what they did with Jurassic World look at look at the lengths that they had to go through with blue to turn the velociraptor into an action hero that that the audience held their breath for and felt for the blood transfusion in um in fallen kingdom i think he's laying the groundwork to help godzilla make that transition into a much more emotive creature which i think is is hard i think personally i think that's hard to do for for godzilla it's a it's a challenging um it's a it's a challenging proposition it's a lot easier with kong so let's 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 do that with kong let's make it about kong it's a good note here because again we're not showing up to this movie for Rebecca Hall or Dan Stevens, we're here for the monster. So, we're, we're he he used he used Kong to really emphasize this transition as monsters as main characters, not the human character. The human characters are not main characters; they are they are the B list uh, of the movie. So so these monsters need to be built up, built up so that they can carry the film. And uh, one important thing, looking at Kong's arc, and kind of like is perhaps the the deep dive into into this movie as well, which I'll talk about, I might talk about later if I remember. Kong earns his title in this movie, and it and it won't surprise me in the least if uh, we we finally call him King Kong in in the next one. I think that was a big problem with uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters that, you know, I think they were, they were making, they were the, when they were laying out the franchise, they were moving forward with the franchise. They were kind of just making shit up as they went along. But like, you can't like, like you, you're, you're, it was teased, right? You went with Kong Skull Island. You know, he's not the king yet. So then the next film, all of a sudden, we're like forgetting King Kong altogether and saying Godzilla is the king of the... Eh. And then you have verses where that king title is not... That, that, that title is never truly resolved. The thing about this movie is Kong's arc is about leadership. And, and I think there's a very interesting dynamic. I'm going to just jump into this. Okay, so for example, 
the reason I like Jurassic World so much is that it is so meta and it is so much deeper than people give it credit for. The movie is a statement. It said right at the very beginning, it is a it is a statement about franchise filmmaking. It's a statement about endless sequels. They you know the the dinosaurs represent Indominus Rex represents this this sequel culture bigger meaner more teeth bigger angrier more teeth i don't remember what the specific line was but that that movie is so meta and then it's about the franchise too it's about chaos when these things keep growing they become more chaotic indominus rex becomes an embodiment of that franchise I think when you peel these layers back, Jurassic World is is wicked smart and and really interesting. I don't know that the new empire is anything below. You know, I, ironically, the movie that takes place entirely in hollow, almost entirely in hollow Earth. I don't know that there's really anything beneath the surface of of the new empire, but. Possibly, you could view it through a political lens, which makes uh, stateside stateside uh, fans it makes it a very interesting uh, election presidential election year release because you have Kong, who leads with compassion. You have Scar King, who is the despotic dictator. And you have Godzilla, who is capable of leading, but again, like I've been saying, Godzilla is depicted as this as this animalistic, lizard-brained force of nature. Again, go back last film uh, or, or King of Monsters. He Godzilla is the alpha. He is leader by sheer force, and that doesn't make a good leader. What makes a good leader? is leading with compassion, leading by example. And that's the story that Kong gets to, uh, that we get to see unfold with Kong. And and again, that context of him being so lonely and so desperate, that we've seen from Skull Island, this this, this guy who's just desperate to, to find a home and to find a family, uh, to, to know that he's not alone, this arc that he's been on comes to this very beautiful end in or or is fully realized even in the new empire and also that idea like we know he's king kong but at no point has he earned his title and that's what happens in this movie so so i think that's what this movie hangs its hat on again if you are a fan of kong that's why you are going to love this movie. It is this character finally becoming the king he is supposed he was always supposed to be. That's pretty fucking cool. And the the fact that we were we were finally able to get to that point. I I I I, I think I already said this. It's not going to surprise me in the bit uh in, in the least that that we'll finally call him king in the next installment. Uh so here he to to expound just a smidge, through Suko, it was Suko's the mini Kong uh, you've seen in the trailers. Hopefully you've seen the movie. Uh, that's one plot twist that I'm not going to give away because I thought that was actually really effective when I watched it. I was very surprised by that. Uh, and if you've watched it, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, so through Suko and and Scar King's minions and Scar King's slaves, uh, Kong demonstrated empathy and compassion, leadership. He teaches Suko leading by example. And when Kong is crushed by his hero's journey, he's he's humble enough. Not only this is this is this is again, this is leadership. This is this is a powerful example of leadership. You kind of have to wonder like, all right, what was this intentionally released uh, in a presidential uh, election year? Maybe. I I'm, could just be reading into it. I don't think it's that on the nose. Um, but when he's crushed, he's humble enough uh, to reach out not and, and not only accept help from the from the humans, but to reach out and ask for help because because that is that is the third act. Uh, he needs help from the humans 
and he accepts help. He, he needs help from the humans from the very beginning. He violates the boundary, knowing that he's going to piss off Godzilla when he goes topside uh, for a toothache because he can't solve that problem himself, and he needs the humans' help. Contrast, again, the despotic leadership, you know, of, of Scar King, never showing weakness, never ruling with the iron fist, right? And even, and even Godzilla too, like even though Godzilla isn't evil, Godzilla is still that force of nature that, that wears the crown in this franchise because he is the most powerful, period. So it's a movie about compassion. <laughs> and that's kind of a beautiful thing that that oh we're we're here to watch these 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 kaiju smash smash each other's faces apart. But like oh no, the the story is about you know to be a leader you have to you have to lead with with your heart and lead with compassion. So I I don't know I I think that's that's that's. That's cool. That's sweet. You know, that that's the heart of the movie. And, you know, you don't you weren't going to get that in this particular movie with Godzilla. You're only going to get that with Kong. And also, again, to realize that storyline that was started with Skull Island. Thank you. Thank you. As everybody as, as I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one who was waiting for sequels to Skull Island. And of course, they never materialize. It was just the merging of the two franchises. I, I appreciate this resolution to the character that and getting to see Kong earn earn his king title. That's again, like that, that was that was a cool moment. So Kong is this compelling 300 foot character. and. That 300-foot character, that's important because that really tees up, again, kind of already mentioned it, but it really tees up my biggest issue with this film. And again, I enjoyed the film. I would call it, like, a solid B film. You know, it wasn't, I think, I think not having, you know, that extra depth to it is what uh, didn't elevate it to to an A film. Um, I think... You know, having it's again, like I said, it's been it's been a little over twenty four hours since I watched it now, and other than that moment in the finale, there really wasn't much of the big smash 'em ups that's that's sticking in my head. That being said, I thoroughly like I I thoroughly enjoyed the film. I had a smile on my face the whole time. It's going to be interesting because when uh, Versus came out. That was like it hit H. That was when we were getting fi uh, films released on HBO right away uh, on Max. And that was one of the first films I have ever watched on repeat. So I watched it like a handful of times right away, two or three times right away, which which is I just don't do that. I'll usually watch something once and then revisit later on. So versus I watched on repeat a few times. I'm not sure I feel the same way about The New Empire. I know I will watch it again. I will happily watch it again. Uh, but the, the this main critique is is I think is is the big thing, the big big thing that keeps it that that reduces the rewatchability for me. So much of the movie takes place in the Hollow Earth. When again, bias aside, I'm not a fan of the Hollow Earth. But in the context of this film, they've they've smoothed smoothed off the edges, and I buy at least now I buy into it. Had a hard time buying into it with uh, with certainly with the last film. Um, and it's very obvious in the trailers. But with so much of this movie taking place in the Hollow Earth. We lose that sense of scale for these 300 plus foot kaiju to the point where, right, you, you introduce the baby kaiju, and the baby Suko, who's like pint size compared to Kong. But I don't think there's a single moment in the movie where you get to still see Suko tower over a human. And, and then with so much of the movie in Hollow Earth and so much of the movie 
Kong dealing one on one and directly with with uh, Scar King's minions. It yes, it beca- it starts feeling like like that honorary uh, installment of Planet of the Apes, but you forget when you're watching this, you forget that these are three hundred foot tall monsters. And again, I'm here for the giant monster monkey action. Not really, not necessarily the normal sized monkey. Like, so I, the movie loses its sense of monster kaiju scale. That's the biggest criticism. Does that make it a bad film? Absolutely not. But I think it reduces the rewatchability. Now, very critically. Uh, one, this issue is obviously resolved in the climax. Again, we know this. Uh, takes place <laughs> in Egypt. Takes place in um, uh, the the top side finale fight sequences. Show the scale. Uh, too little, too late. Is it enough? I don't know. What when the majority of the film you start seeing these characters as like normal human sized characters leave a comment like let me know am i crazy like i lo- we lost the scale of the kaiju i think that was that was an issue but critically helping that problem this is why i i am not dismissive of godzilla's sidelining and his b plot because that's how he was used throughout this movie to still show these monsters at full scale topside and 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 what the impact of of the those monsters in the real world are. So even though down in Hollow Earth, all throughout the time down in Hollow Earth, as we're losing sense of of Kong's scale and and Scar King and and all of that, you still have Godzilla traipsing around topside, you know, and taking naps um, in uh, in the Colosseum and and. All of that, like, even though it's B-plot, it's so essential B-plot and and important in the canvas of this picture to still remind the audience, like, these are giant fucking monsters that will fuck shit up. Like, imagine if we didn't have the Godzilla B-plot line, and then all of a sudden we jump up, so the entire movie takes place in a hollow earth until the final act, and all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute, like... Oh, these guys are really, are really like that would have been a huge slap in the face without having seeded that properly. Even though we know, like we know it's a giant smash em up kaiju film. That's the disassociation that's happening in, 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 in the hollow earth. You lose sense of scale. Another quick note, uh, I, I have to, because because this this was a big takeaway, I think, uh, in 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 the plus column, the film is bright and colorful, easy to follow. Uh, like I've already kind of mentioned, we are a very very long way from 2014 Godzilla, uh, and and I had to rewatch uh, King of the Monsters. I did not like King of the Monsters when it came out, probably because I wanted. I I am more invested in Kong, but King of Monsters is so weird. And again, I'm gonna I, oh no, I'll mention it now. We're we're getting towards the end. Um, King of the Monsters. This I'll read it to you. Note a lot, word for word. We're a long way from King of the Monsters. Gotcha, kaiju too big for the frame gimmicks. I'll have a frame up here or something to show you what I remind you. I I thought the cinematography that was still too dark and it's a good idea. Like, oh, the monsters are too big for the frame. So we can only see like this. We can only see a small portion of them at a time. Right. Because because they're too big for the frame. But I'm not sure that makes for really good filmmaking and story, visual storytelling. Like you can do that a little bit. But and then he like the filmmaker was actually antagonistic because, uh, you know, there was going to be a nice big wide shot of Godzilla and the the f- 
the fucking airplane comes up in front of the frame. Like, intentionally, like, we're about to see, like, this really cool wide shot of Godzilla, uh, some big action sequence, and the plane flies up into the scene. Like, that, that, uh, I felt that was very antagonistic, and I thought that was very dumb, and I thought that was very... Um, uh, th- the cinematography, you know, ruined that film for me, which is weird because... King of the Monsters is also the very best score in the Monsterverse. As much as I love uh, Skull Island, Bear McCreary did King of the Monsters, and he brought such a unique vision and such a unique vision to classic themes. And then there's this great cover of uh with 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 the the system of a down guy like that album is just is a banger that album is better than the film in my opinion i also am a fan of movie instrumentals movie scores and i mention all of that because uh, junkie xl todd holkenberg i believe did this film and the last film the scores for for the last two films, which, in the context of the film, in Adam Wingard's, we'll call it uh, the you know um, '80s aesthetic, like it works in the context of the film, but they're also really boring. Like you listen to that music outside of the film, and it's just uninspired and boring. Uh, you don't have any of the big the big original themes you don't have the 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 originality of bear mccreary's uh it's you can look at the music as an example of legendary really making that this shit up as they as they went along not being able to you know have really good set rules to guide the franchise forward so again, not that I like the music of this current iteration, add that to the Hollow Earth, but I have mad respect for Adam Wingard to be honing this current v- version of, of the MonsterVerse and really making all of the elements work. Elements might not work outside the picture, but in the context of the film, it works. So finally, uh, real quickly, uh, Scar King. Uh, this was this this was a comment I saw on Reddit, and I'm stealing it for myself. Like he is a great villain. He he has like classic. I I felt he had actual classic Disney villain vibes to him. Maybe that's just the, in the name. The from the trailers and the stills, and especially the toys. I was I had issues with his design. I I didn't like the way he looked. So. See, like, like seeing how he played up, he played out, and how vile his personality. Like, you want a villain to hate and to to be standing up and cheering their defeat, and they delivered that with Scar King, and that I think that was that was very impressive to 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 see that in action. So. Those were, uh, I knew I was going to forget something. There were, there were two major critiques about, about the film. I need, uh, the depth, I guess that was the other one, the depth of it. I wonder if the, because of the political nature, I think, feel like there was another one, but I've got already gone through all of my notes and I forget. So eh, there you go. I know I said a lot of, um, still, although I think I, I, I got into it a little bit or, or smoothed out a little bit, uh, there's another one there. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. I should have mentioned this at the top. Um, this is not in, in, uh, I, I promised early, last week, earlier this week, I promised in the last video that RoboCop versus RoboCop was going to be my next watch list video. I promised it was going to be Wednesday. It is happening next Wednesday. I will do it. It will happen next Wednesday. I didn't want to do my Honestly Crumbine video. I wasn't ready to do that just yet. That's why I wanted to jump in with this one. So, so Godzilla X 
Kong, The New Empire, that uh, I loved it. I, 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 no, I didn't love it. I had a thoroughly good time with it. It was a fun film. And I think the thing that the movie hangs its hat on is the completion of Kong's storyline so that in the next film, we get, he, he, whether we give him the title or not in this film, he earned the title. And that's a, that's a huge fucking deal. That was a big, big thing. So that was really cool. Uh, and now I'm just repeating myself. So there you go. Those were, those were my thoughts for Godzilla Kong New Empire. Uh, if you made it this far, uh, thanks for hanging out. I guess this was, this is, this is what I do here. We just, we just hang out and, and, and talk movies. Uh, check out, uh, I don't know, check out whatever you want to check out. <laughs> listen, listen, listen to this. Listen, give this a listen. If you sat through an hour of me rambling about Godzilla and Kong, listen to an hour of, uh, one of my short stories, and this is a great example. So I'll link it in 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 the description below. Drop a listen to that, and then drop a comment. Let me know you listen to that because there's there's some legacy material on this channel that that needs your love, guys. So help me out. Come on, give me a like. Let the algorithm know I'm not a danger to freaking society or whatever. Help them know, like YouTube has forgotten. You YouTube has lost sight of my scale. It's been a very long time. They need to be reminded. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I don't know what I'm talking about. Later. <laughs>